Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you Lick 1 from my Supersonic Pentatonics lesson series. So the idea behind these lessons is to take a really simple picking sequence and then combine it with the basic Shape 1 minor pentatonic scale. So most intermediate guitarists are already aware of that pattern and you'll have already come across alternate picking as well. So what we're going to do is combine the two together to give us this really rapid fire lick that just, in the end of it, it'll just shoot through the scale to give you a pretty impressive sounding lick, but you've not actually tried that hard to achieve it because you're already aware of the scale shape, you're not having to learn any new complicated patterns, you're just using the knowledge that you already had. So what I'm going to do is show you the lick at full speed and then I'm going to break it down and play it a bit slower. I'm then also going to give you a close up of the, the picking sequence. Then I'm also going to give you some tips on how to help achieve a, a quicker speed with it. And just, just a few practice tips really just to uh, help you push it. So I hope you enjoy this lesson and you learn something new from it and I hope you look forward to the second instalment. Cheers. Here's the picking sequence for the lick. So it's 9th fret of the E string with a down pick, 12th fret of the E string with an up pick, then back to your 9th fret with a down pick, then an up pick to your B string 12th fret, which gives us this as our sequence. That's how basic this picking pattern actually is. It's just a really simple pattern. But what we're going to do is just repeat it through the scale. So the next pattern would start on the B string and just follow the scale shape. Then we start on the G string. We start on the D. The last one, when we start on the A, we've got a little bit of a, fit, um, a tail end to the lick where we just add the ninth fret of the E in there, and it just finishes the pattern off. So when we put all that together, nice and slowly, it gives us... So you try to keep that tight alternate picking all the time. Down, up, down, up. 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 Here's a few tips and exercises to help with building up the speed and clarity with this lick. So the biggest tip I could give is to learn this lick in hammer-ons and pull-offs. So instead of alternate picking, what we're going to do is that instead. So we're going to hammer instead of the alternate pick. So what we're going to do is play the 9 with the down pick, hammer onto the 12, pull off back to the 9, down pick the 12 on the B string, which gives us this. So this makes a good lick just repeating that pattern in that position. And 
you've probably heard guitarists doing things like that before. Um, but what we're going to do is repeat it through the full scale like we were doing with the alternate picked version. So when that's sped up, it gives us that. Even though hammer-ons and pull-offs and alternate picking are considered two totally different things, when I'm playing this lick at my top speed, I'm trying to move my fingers in the, in the same way I do for, for that hammer-on and pull-off version. And it's that kind of like fleet-fingered fleet fingered movement that kind of helps me with it. Um, it might not work for you to think of it that way, but it definitely helps me. Um, it just really, that, like I mentioned, the fleet finger thing of just like wiggling your fingers through it for the hammer on and pull off version. But what I'm trying to do is just pick the strings along with it. But if you give it a go, it might work, it might not, but it's definitely worth a bash. An exercise that I use is one where it helps me focus just on the picking end. And to do that, we eliminate the pentatonic pattern. So instead of, of playing that sequence, what we do, we, we simplify and just use an exercise pattern of 10th fret to 9th fret, but on every string. So when we eliminate the pattern, we don't have to think about Oh, which fret does that finger go on? That kind of thing. We don't have to think of it anymore. It's the same sequence. It's, it's symmetrical all the way through. So what we do is, though, is repeat the exact same lick. But through this little exercise pattern. When you do that, it's, it just lets you really focus on this picking end. Um, and what I'd also do is I'd do the exact same thing, but with the first to third finger. So that would be ninth fret to the eleventh fret. And I'd also practice that. 9th fret to the 12th, but with my little finger. So if you build up with those and just practice your finger movements, but in simple patterns, it does really help. And, and again, it really lets you focus on that picking pattern instead of having to think about two things at once. You're having to think about where to put your fingers for each string change, and you also have to think about the picking. So I've, I've always found that really helps with, with building up the speed when you can just concentrate on one thing. So the last tip will be to play all these exercises with a metronome. So you'd set your click going and then play all the patterns along with it. come to the real thing. So once you've found that comfortable speed to start with, you would then start notching up your metronome a bit at a time until you find you can't push anymore and you kind of think you've found your speed boundary. So you can class that as your personal best and what you'd want to do is write down that beat per minute number that you've got to. And when you've got it down, you can kind of think, right, I'm going to try and beat that in my next practice session. So what you do is, if you were, let's say, at uh, 120 beats per minute, for an, as an example, as your personal best, the next time you do a practice session, you might want to start at about, like say 
110 or something like that. So you, you're just a little bit behind what you know you're capable of. And you would just push one beat per minute up every time. So you'd practice the pattern at 111 for a little bit. You'd blast through it a few times and then just one at a time up and spend a couple of minutes on each one. And what you'll find is that you'll be able to push past your old personal best if you just build it up really slowly, one beat per minute at a time. And again, you just want to find your personal best for each practice session. And you just want to keep that thought in mind that you want to beat your personal best. But it takes time and the speed that I'm playing at is not something that just happened overnight. I, I had to work with a metronome and just build it up. But if you're really focused, it, it doesn't take that long because the patterns are so simple. Uh, eventually, you'll just whiz through it. So I hope these uh, tips helped and I hope you enjoyed the lick and the lesson. Um, hopefully, you'll look forward to the next one. Cheers.